Let it be no surprise to me that the interwebs, the hardcore fan base, the independent wrestling scene, other people within the wrestling business are very praising of the cruiserweight class that the WWE has been doing. Let it be no surprise that everybody praised it in its greatness and its awesomeness and all this other shit. Good Christ. This is what the business has come down to. Trying to defend a 1.88 rating and getting giggly tits about the Cruiserweight Classic. And now the WWE, apparently, is going to add a Cruiserweight division on Raw. To which I very si simply and succinctly say, why? The fuck good is this going to do? How the fuck is this changing anything? How the hell is this a solution to any current problems that the WWE has? I mean, step back and think about this for a second. We're getting excited about a cruiserweight division. Where we already know, no matter how much some of you fucktards want to deny this, that the smaller the business gets and the more it emphasizes flips and bumps and high spots and shit, the viewership and audience continues to go down. Instead of trying to change things and adding some spice and doing some different things and trying to appeal to a larger audience, we double down on the freaking hardcore audience and go even more balls deep into this shit. Oh my god. Look, there's a place for cruiserweights. And in theory, I think cruiserweights can bring something to the table. And fundamentally, I don't have a, pro a problem with them being on WWE programming or any other major wrestling company's programming. What I do have a problem with is the WWE in its current state doubling down on this hardcore appeal and bringing in a cruiserweight division for the purposes that they are and the way that they're going to ultimately. Here's what I don't get about adding a cruiserweight division to Raw. Number one, your show already has too much wrestling. Now, a lot of you think that's sacrilegious to say that a wrestling show has too much wrestling. But yes, when those matches feature characters that are never developed in stories that don't fucking matter, in matches that you've seen far too many goddamn times, there is indeed too much wrestling on Raw on a weekly basis. It's segment, match, 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 segment, match, 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 segment, match, match, match. It's the same predictable format every week. Several matches that don't fucking matter. Many matches that are repeats that you've seen on SmackDown in the past, or you've seen on this, or you've seen last week on Raw, you've seen on pay-per-view the night before. All this other shit. The last thing the WWE needs to do is double down on a programming format that isn't working, that is driving away audiences in droves. Bringing in a cruiserweight division does nothing to address character development. It does nothing to address having some type of storytelling element to your actual fucking lousy-ass product. All it does is give the WWE a lazy-ass way to fill three hours of show by featuring more cruiserweights who, in large part, aren't going to get over in a meaningful way that is going to impact the company's bottom line in an effective manner. And that's a fact, Jack. And you don't like it, eat shit. Because that's exactly how the hell it is. Furthermore, how ridiculous is it going to be, because I can, I can imagine this will happen at some point in time, where your cruiserweight champion is going to be at the same size or bigger than your heavyweight champion, your WWE champion, your universal champion, whatever the fuck you want to call him now. How stupid is that going to look when your cruiserweight champion is just as big, if not bigger, than your world champion? And frankly, why add a cruiserweight division and add some confusion to the product itself when a lot of your main events seen over the past few years, for the most part, has in large part been cruiserweights? You know, traditionally, I've always known cruiserweights to have some type of weight limit between 190 to 220 pounds. And frankly, for a WWE main eventer today, that in large part seems to be the average sweet spot of the size of the dudes. AJ Styles, Dolph Ziggler, Finn Balor, Seth Rollins. They all fit into that category. All of them. You know, Dean Ambrose ain't far away. 
lot of these other dudes, what, if Isaiah or Tommy came up to the main roster and you put him in the main event scene, same fucking thing? What the hell is the difference between the cruiserweight division and the WWE championship level or the universal championship level if these guys are all the same damn size as these guys and there's no freaking difference? That doesn't mean you need to have a bunch of stiff moving steroid freaks at the top. No! But you need to have some variety. You need to have some spice. You need to have some clearly established hierarchy where these guys aren't the same as these fucking guys. So you wonder why the hell there's this division and why this belt would mean any less than this goddamn belt. If anything, it only leads to a further devaluing of the world title and means nobody's going to fucking get over which the WWE is incredibly expert at nowadays because that's the plan. That's the intention is you don't want to get anybody over because you don't want to make any fucking stars. And if you enjoy the WWE not getting anybody over in a meaningful way, and if you enjoy the WWE not really trying to make any big stars, then continue to support these type of decisions. This is what happens when we get caught up in the wrestling bubble of bullshit where hardcore fans watch NXT and think NXT is great because they get some characters that, for the most part, only really work at that level. You don't get much in the way of storytelling. It's just match, 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 which, of course, the hardcore fans are going to gravitate to because they feel like they have a greater appreciation for the art form. But this whole harkens back to the thing of, at some point in time along the way, there was a seismic shift in the approach and the philosophy of the fans of the wrestling business, and frankly, the marks in the wrestling business, the biggest marks of fucking all. And I think too many people watch too many shoot videos with Ric Flair and so many others where they were trying to justify why they were better than somebody else even though they weren't because in a business where the only thing that matters is the fucking bottom line, the dollars drawn, these guys were talking about fucking work rate. Like, who gives a shit? Would you rather be the dude that goes out and kills himself for 60 minutes for one price? Or would you rather be the dude that goes out there and poses for 10 minutes and makes four times as much in front of a sold-out audience? If you're any type of businessman, the answer is fucking simple. A cruiserweight division on Raw. Just another division with a bunch of dudes where no characters are going to be developed, no characters are going to be progressed, no interesting or compelling storylines are hardly ever going to happen. And it's just going to lead to more lazy writing and booking on Raw every week and at the pay-per-views. Because you're just going to put dudes together in a random match. And you're going to have guys go out there and fucking kill themselves for no fucking reason. I expect fans to act in this way. Because they're fans. They're supposed to get their enjoyment out of it however they want. My gripe is not even with that so much. Even though the hardcore fans need to understand... That supporting this type of shit is incredibly detrimental to the product. And as the company has shifted the past few years in their philosophy to appeal more to you, and the audience has continued to decrease, especially in terms of the television ratings, we must understand there is a correlation and this is not good. Usually, growing good, shrinking bad. Somehow we got perverted and twisted the wrong way. And shrinking like a turtle turtle in water is a good thing. And growing is bad. And this is kind of appeals to the whole thing of The Rock. When he comes back and he starts talking about clanging and begging and fucking Jim. You want to talk about out of touch? This dude is fucking out of touch. You clearly don't know your fucking audience. Yes, you have some of the people like me that actually appreciate that it's The Rock and everything else. But for the most part, the audience has changed. You must understand that these people ain't lifting weights. And they don't like the wrestlers that lift weights. They don't want to hear you talking about clanging and banging. They want to hear you talking about playing World of Warcraft till 3 in the fucking morning. That's something they can go <laughs> to. That's how fucked up and twisted this business has gotten. And we're going to get happy about a cruiserweight division that's going to lead to more pointless wrestling on Raw? Oh, it spotlights more guys. Oh, does it really fucking do that? Does it really? And even if it does, in theory, are these the guys that you need to be spotlighting? Instead of doing shit like this, why not figure out better ways to feature more guys on the fucking roster that you already have? It just 
The Mark's in the business. What the fuck are you doing? Yeah, you can't even call the fans the Marks anymore. Because compared to the wrestlers and the creative teams and the executives running the show or calling the shots in WWE, look at the body of evidence and tell me who the fucking Marks are. You know, as Dutch Mantel said, he used to like the business a lot more when the Marks had out in the seats. I kind of used to disagree with that assertion a little bit because I always felt like the wrestling business was full of marks. You know, these are people that used to so ardently believe in kayfabe that to the point where they were so disconnected from reality that they didn't realize that people always knew it was scripted and fake entertainment and it didn't fucking matter. Make it good. People will find a way to suspend their disbelief and they'll fucking watch. Did we really think The Undertaker was dead? Dad! Did we really think Kane raised his arms and went down like this and flames just magically shot out of thin fucking air because he had demonic powers? I mean, give me a fucking break. But if it's good, we care. If it's good, people watch. If it's really good, more people watch. Which you would think would be the whole intention of doing this and doing more of the same shit that isn't working, that is driving away the audience, is not the way to go. It is stubbornly digging your heels in. It's like the WWE is intentionally trying to kill itself. That old promo years ago where Vince McMahon says, I'm going to inject the WWE with a lethal dose of poison. Somebody's watched that promo a little too much because he's buying into it and he's believing in it. Look, a lot of you can have fun with the cruiserweight division. And a lot of you can jerk off to it. Whatever, fine. Just don't sell me that this is something good. Don't sell me that this is going to be something that's helpful to the product. It's just going to be something that adds on to the piles of what is wrong with this company, what is wrong with this product, and what is wrong with the overall approach and philosophy as a business as a whole. Trying to look big picture here. And from a truly big picture standpoint, there's only negative that comes out of this, not positive. Now, I'm tired of people trying to sit there and make excuses for this crap. I'm tired of excuses, people trying to sit there and put a positive spin on this crap. When your main bread and butter show does a 1.88 rating and over the past four years has lost another million and a half viewers, there's no positive spin to put on that. There just isn't. It's not getting any better. And decisions like this don't help things. They only make the problems worse. Enjoy your Cruiserweight Classic. That just ended. Enjoy the Cruiserweights on Raw. I know fucking one or two segments every week of this product that I won't be watching.